title last year. But do we do we classify him as a winner for for jumping on that Warriors team? He's technically he is a winner. Technically he is a champion. I always have never been been a fan of saying oh it was a well, fake yeah. championship and all that because he still did his job. But I just don't. He doesn't have to me the same respect that, that he does with other champions. Sure. Like I respect all of James's rings in Miami. I don't respect Kevin Durant's ring with Golden State. I mean the team and he jumped on, on that team with three other all stars, all NBA players, um, defensive player of the year, greatest shooter of all time, top five shooter of all time probably, and Clay. Yeah, and they just beat you three one. Like come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean that's it. Yeah, it's it's it, it, you're 100 percent right in terms of respecting it, but I I I still can't see. For example, when you look at Hakeem Olajuwon's rings, or you look at Dwayne Wade's ring in 2006, or you look at yeah. Dirk's ring in 2011, or it, some of LeBron's rings, or or even Steph Curry's in 2015, yeah. you, you you respect them because they had moments of truth throughout those playoffs where they had to stand up, and they they were challenged. And yeah. quite honestly, the one time they were, that they were challenged, or there was a couple of times in the finals too, but the one time getting to the finals, they, they, got, they, they lucked out big time by one of the dirtiest plays that we've seen in yeah. the last 20 years. Yeah. And people say, oh, you know, we, we celebrate dirty plays in the, in the 80s and 90s, but yet we get upset over Zaza Pachulia. No, that was filthy. That was, you know what? If I was commissioner of the league, I would have kicked him out for that because he took about four four additional steps after the closeout to make sure that his feet were underneath Leonard's when he came down. Mm-hmm. And this is a big reason. I don't want to harp on the Warriors too much here, but this is a big reason why I can't put the Warriors over too many great teams at this stage because, because, that, because we don't know exactly how that conference finds. We were robbed of that. In order to be a great team, you need to prove your greatness. You need to... Go through the Utah Jazz with you know two Hall of Famers, two of the very best at their positions, and not just their positions but their roles. Carl Malone, number two scorer of all time. John Stockton, number one assist of time, all time. So that's their roles, and that's how good they were at it. They were masters at their craft, and the Bulls were able to beat them twice. And then the Bulls also beat Magic. Magic was only thirty-one. Everyone says that he was old. The Bulls also went through the the uh, the Detroit Pistons. They had three Hall of Famers on that team, and they there was a lot of mileage on those tires. But they weren't old. Isaiah Thomas was only thirty at that at that point in his career. They still had plenty left. Uh, Clyde Drexler, runner up in MV, in the MVP voting in ninety two. Jordan annihilated him. How many times did he beat Ewing? He took he swept uh, the the ninety six Orlando Magic. So the point I'm trying to make here with all of this is the Bulls were validated by their competition and who they went through. The Warriors yep. last year, they're not validated because who did they go through? They went through the Utah Jazz uh, with Joe Ingles as their second best player. And no disrespect <laughs> to Joe Ingles, he's from my country. But he's not a great player. And that doesn't give him any points whatsoever. They went through a Portland team that by the skin of their teeth made the playoffs. They were looking horrible all year. And then they went through... Uh, the, the Spurs missing their best player and LaMarcus Aldridge was not an all-star last year. In fact, they were looking to trade him and they couldn't get anything for him. And that's why they kept him. So I know that was a bit of a rant there, but the, the, the point is you need to be validated by, by who you've gone through and Kevin Durant still is yet to go through anybody. This whole concept of, well, look at the, the, how good the, the Cavs are on paper. Okay, but look, let's look at how good the Warriors are on paper. So therefore, it's... Kevin Durant still has that advantage. I'm not giving him any advantage of a, 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 a or any credit for going through Cleveland when he has a better team. If he has a worse team than Cleveland, sure. Like if it's just say if Allen Iverson went through the 2001 Lakers, yeah. that would mean so much because that that 2001 Lakers Lakers team was absolutely stacked. You listed your top ten players of all time. Kobe at number three. I think Shaq was at number seven. To give you an idea of just how loaded that, and those guys were at least in their athletic primes. Kobe's yeah. maturation wasn't quite there. So, yeah, still- so if Iverson had gone through that team, then we'd give him all the credit in the world. We might even talk about Iverson as a top fifteen player of all time had he pulled that off. But wait, wait, wait. sorry, go. it's like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I went on a bit of a rant there. But in terms of Kevin Durant, I I would probably take LeBron over Kevin Durant. Okay. 
It's kind of a, a long way of putting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, man. I, hey, man, preach, preach. 